The all-new third-generation Toyota Sequoia is here for 2023, and there is a lot to love about it. If you guys have been watching my videos lately, you probably think that it's perfect because I'm that enamored with it. But the reality is that it does have some downsides, and in today's video, I'm going to talk about five things that I don't like about the all-new Sequoia. The third generation Sequoia sadly loses one of the most iconic features of both the first and second generation models, and that is the roll down rear window. Instead, we've got this little button that you can push right here to flip up the glass. So when you're parked, you still have some of that same functionality, get things in and out without opening up the whole hatch, but you're probably not gonna wanna drive with this window open. And so you're losing the ability to air out the cabin with that window down. Your dogs are gonna be really sad and it definitely loses a little bit of its cool factor. The Sequoia's got an awesome powertrain. It's a 3.4 liter twin turbo, six cylinder hybrid with an abundance of power, 437 horsepower, 583 pound-feet of torque. It's very quick and it's silky smooth. Unfortunately, the fuel efficiency is not as impressive. Now, the interesting thing is that Toyota also offers this same powertrain as a premium option on the Tundra. But the Tundra, you also have the choice of a uh, standard engine without the hybrid component that's quite a bit less expensive and it still offers an abundance of power. 389 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque, more than what you got on the outgoing 5.7 liter from the second generation Tundra and Sequoia. Now, why it was that on the hybrid option, they felt that it needed more horsepower and more torque rather than just matching those same numbers on the standard engine and giving you better fuel efficiency is beyond me, but that's what I wish they would have done. Instead, you get an EPA rating on a four wheel drive model like this of 19 miles per gallon in the city and 22 miles per gallon on the highway, which sounds pretty good until you realize that in real world driving conditions, those numbers are actually probably less. I've been seeing closer to about 15 miles per gallon in the city and 20 miles per gallon on the highway. So I wish that Toyota would have just matched those numbers of the standard engine and given us better fuel efficiency instead of more power. Perhaps the biggest disappointment of the new Sequoia is that they've gone away from the fully independent rear suspension that we saw in the second generation model, and they've gone with a solid rear axle, which pushes up into the cabin and it affects your functionality in the third row seat, as well as cargo space. In that third row, compared with the second generation Sequoia, you're losing 1.6 inches of legroom, and then the seat is quite a bit flatter, and so you're getting less thigh support. The reason that they're doing that is to basically bring you down so that you're maintaining the same headroom that we had in the second generation model. So less legroom, less comfortable. And then the other big downside, go ahead and drop down these seats, is that we lose cargo space. You can see that the floor here is already raised up a little bit, and then with these seats folded down, you can see they're not folding down into the floor. Instead, they're sitting up above the floor, which means you've got a lot less cargo space than you did in the second generation Sequoia. Second generation model actually had 120 cubic feet when those seats were folded down. This model has 87, so a huge uh, decrease there. That's only three cubic feet more than what you get in a Highlander. So that is a huge impact to the cargo area. And then again, the seats are also less comfortable. The next thing I don't like about the Sequoia is the infotainment interface. The screen itself is awesome. I love the way that it's kind of the focal point of the cabin here. It's integrated really nicely into the design and it just has a really cool modern look to it. But the actual software of this system is basically garbage. Um, it's unfortunate because it's such a great vehicle in so many other capacities, but so many things are controlled through this system. Uh, Toyota actually on the new Tundra and Sequoia has gone away from basically having a third party develop their software to developing this in-house. And while they're really good at building trucks, maybe not so good at building software. And it's definitely a weak point of both models. I actually also have a new BZ4X and it's got the same software interface and it's even more frustrating on the BZ4X than it is on the Tundra and the Sequoia. But as you can see, it wants me to enter a pin right now. On my Tundra, I'd constantly get this message. There'd be a lot of connectivity issues as well. And then even when there aren't error codes, just the, uh, the efficiency of this system, see the error code's coming right back up again. <laughs> But when this is gone, the efficiency of this system is not very good because like right now it would be on audio and that's all you're seeing is audio information. You go to you know, your Bluetooth, that's all you're seeing is Bluetooth. There's no part of the system where it's got like a screen that gives you fuel efficiency and phone contacts and your navigation screen. And you've got all this real estate where you could fit a lot of things into one screen and for whatever reason, 
Toyota decided not to do that. Now, the one saving grace is that it is um, CarPlay and Android Auto capable. And so you can use those and have some of that functionality, but the Toyota portion of the interface is pretty bad. I don't usually rank my likes and dislikes in videos like this, but I'm gonna make an exception in this case. This is the thing that I dislike the most about the all new Sequoia. And that is that I can't afford one. They're expensive. The base SR5 model with delivery is about $60,000. And then once you get up to the TRD Pro model like this or the capstone model, you're looking at about $80,000 without accessories. So very pricey. Huge jump from the uh, pricing on the second generation Sequoia. I still want one, but man, I wish they were less expensive. So there you have it. The all new third generation Sequoia is not perfect. Although I'd still like to have one, especially a TRD Pro like this, but I don't have $80,000. So maybe someday. If you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And for more videos of the all new Sequoia, be sure to subscribe. In the meantime, thanks for watching.